Well, welcome everybody to another edition of the Psych Monologues. I'm glad that you've taken some time out of your day. I'm honored that you've taken some time out of your day just to hear uh, some of my thoughts on living uh, with ourselves and others and Jesus. And um, if you if this is your first time watching even the video, um, the the uh, and if you're listening to podcasts, there's nothing to see. Um, you might want to come and check it out. You can check it out at the website at drmitch.com. Um, I'll talk about this at the end of the podcast, but M-I-T-S-C-H dot com. You'll find it there at the bottom of the page. Um, and and you can uh, click on the podcast and you can get to it fairly quickly. Um, but let me let me get to it quickly. The the Psych Monologues is is a podcast that actually is devoted to exploring the various issues related to faith, psychology, and spiritual formation. And it it is now a relationship, there's a relationship it has with a larger, not larger, growing organization called Stained Glass International, um, SGI for short. And the mission of SGI is to equip, empower, and encourage the next generation of Christians to live authentically in relationship to Jesus themselves and others. And so one of the missions, one of the visions that I have of SGI is to begin to, to, to resource and train and build um, what I call outposts for the heart and communities for the soul. And that's what this is, is really all about. And so, um, the outpost groups, I don't, like I said, I don't, I haven't landed on a name uh, at this point. I think that's probably as good as any. I, it, it has kind of a funny connotation when you put initials to it, like OG, oh, old, whatever. So anyway, the outpost groups are really meant to be a place of safety, personal, emotional, spiritual safety, places that you can go to take off the mask and take off the armor and be known as you are and and be with others that are trying to do that as well and they're not looking for the the effort here in the in the group is not to create a platform for somebody to to uh, uh, sermonize about the issues that are going on in your life it's just to share stories with each other now some would say that's you know sharing stories of ignorance maybe but I, I believe that, that the promise is true, that wherever the two or more are gathered in my name, in Jesus' name, uh, there I am in their midst. And so the Holy Spirit will guide that process. So <clears throat> pull up a chair, get your favorite beverage in hand, if that would be helpful. If you're driving, don't do that. Just keep your eyes on the road, keep driving. Uh, but pull up a chair, get comfortable, relax. I want to talk about the things that, that matter the most to you. And, and granted, that's kind of a guess. I understand that. Uh, but some of the issues I'm talking about are probably more specific, although they apply to some of uh, the older generations, but more specific to the younger generation because of some of the things that they feel about the church, about Jesus, and God, all of that stuff. So <clears throat> welcome to a new year. Uh, it's January 9th that I am recording this video podcast and podcast. And, you know, I, our, our, you know, when New Year's Day is over, what's the first thing people tend to ask each other, right, is, so do you make any New Year's resolutions? And I've gotten cranky enough to say no because they're stupid. I'm not going to do them. They're all going to be gone by the end of January anyway, so I bother. Um, but I think there, there is a germ of truth to doing something like that in the sense that, as the old saying goes, uh, if you shoot for nothing, you're sure to hit it. And so <clears throat> keeping our eye on the ball, <clears throat> excuse me, keeping your eye on the ball as far as what it is I want to focus on, I want to try to develop changes in. Um, I heard a sermon yesterday, it was perfect, it was right on the money. Uh, in terms of the kinds of changes that we're trying to make in any given year. And, and it requires three different things. And shout out here to Ben Foote from, from Flatirons Church and his sermon. But he said three things. Grace. I watch my, my uh, digits here. But grace and patience and consistency. 
small steps of consistency. And the first one we stumble over, because generally we see grace as something that's weak. We see that there's more than enough grace for us to get saved, but it's weak to to do that. And, and we also, pardon the phrase, we also bastardize the whole concept of grace to say that it's like giving myself a pass just to stay live in mediocrity. And that's remote, not even remotely the truth. I would send you back to the podcast I did about accepting grace um, in, in terms of that discussion. So we're at the beginning of a new year and we're talking about the, you know, the potentials of uh, setting some goals, some objectives, some things to shoot for in our relationships. And one of the things I want to highlight today is, is the topic of healthy relationships and specifically what what makes for healthy relationships and i don't think i'm over overstating this and I, you know other counselors may have a different take on it but i i think one of the linchpin issues in healthy relationships is a concept called boundaries now people generally see boundaries as kind of a pop psych concept that has infiltrated the church and now has become, um, you know, common language. And, and unfortunately, boundaries that are, are not offensive weapons. They are meant to take responsibility for oneself, not to control somebody else's behavior. That is not what boundaries are. Th- that is an offensive weapon. We'll just call it for what it is. So I want to talk a little bit about boundaries. Before I get into this, though, I want to give credit where credit is due. Many, many years ago, when I uh, moved to Wheaton, started working at what was called the Minnith Meyer Clinic. Now it's called the New Life Clinic. Um, and they've split again. And I think there's the Meyer Clinic and whatever else. So, um, But way back in those days, um, the, myself and two other of my friends who were also therapists there at, at the Minner Meyer Clinic, were conscripted to write a 365-day devotional on the topic setting new boundaries. Now, why? Because one of the other clinics of, of this network of clinics, one was in Richardson, Texas, one was in Wheaton, Illinois, and another one was in Southern California, were two gentlemen who had been teaching in Mariner's Church in Southern California, uh, John Townsend and Henry Cloud, and they were they were teaching this stuff. They were teaching stuff on safe people. They were teaching stuff on boundaries, and that that uh, came all together in two of their books, Safe People and Boundaries. And so, I want to give credit where credit is due. John and Henry have released that book, and then shortly after that book came out, we were conscripted to put together something that would put flesh on this thing for people throughout the year. And so uh, the three of us banded together and put together a 365-day devotional on setting new boundaries. And it's walking people through the year to identify what bad boundaries are, how to repair them, and then how to go about maintaining them in some fashion or another. And so obviously ours didn't last. I think the 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 years of devotionals like that fell off and so that fell off as well and and never really to be seen again until recently and of course the book boundaries persisted and it's a good book john and henry have done their due diligence in that and that has spawned some other books in terms of boundaries in dating and boundaries in marriage and boundaries up close and and uh, and good good stuff. John and Henry are quality guys, and so in in writing our devotional, we wanted to flesh this out and just how important boundaries were in healthy relationships. So what I want to do is what I like to do uh, with a lot of things, and that is let's define our terms so we're clear about when we're talking about boundaries. What exactly are we talking about here? And there are some key features or characteristics that I want to highlight for everybody. And, <coughs> excuse me. And then, and then take some time to look at typical patterns of boundaries 
that interfere with healthy relationships. And then we'll stop uh, because that probably will be more than enough uh, for anybody trying to process these things. Um, and, and so let's talk about first what are boundaries and, and that sort of thing. And what are boundaries, at least in our physical world, uh, we have boundaries everywhere, right? We've got walls in, in rooms. We have fences for yards. We have fences for, you know, demarcating what is somebody's uh, responsibility, what is theirs and what isn't theirs, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So fences are one. Walls would be another. If you go back in medieval times, castles were surrounded by moats which was to discourage attackers. Uh, when I grew up, I had a neighbor who had a manicured hedge that went all the way around his property so nobody could could mistake the fact of what he was responsible for. So we have boundaries everywhere. We live with them on a regular basis. We have lines down our highways. So, <clears throat> but there are th three different things I want to highlight for you. First, Boundaries exist in our spiritual world. And Proverbs 4.23 says is a very um, short verse. A lot of people know it. And it says, watch over our hearts, watch over your heart with all diligence. For from it flows the springs of life. Well, a lot of times when we read a verse like that, we just read it in two dimensionality. We don't really think of it in three-dimensional terms and <clears throat> in a lot of cases we have an old testament view of our heart which i would say would be jeremiah everybody can quote this one right i gotta take a drink hang on a sec folks um and that is the heart is desperately wicked who can know it right that's an old testament view of it but we also know that a new covenant had come with Jesus and said, my blood is the new covenant in my blood uh, that saves everyone. And that new covenant is hearkened back in the Old Testament in Ezekiel and other places about God wanting to put a new heart in us. <clears throat> and on that heart would be written his law that that we could live out of that. And so... When Solomon, or the teacher that, who wrote this proverb, said, watch over your heart, it's not watching over a criminal. It's watching over something of immense, immeasurable value. And when you look at it, I, I've done a little digging in here, and you look at the word, it's, it's a word that's often used for the king's treasure. So there's that, and watch over the king's treasure, namely the thing that we refer to as our heart. Your heart is not just the seat of emotions. It is the, it is the, the core of who we are, our dreams, our desires, our passions, you know, our fears, our emotions, certainly, but it's not just our emotions. And it, with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. Now, I'm, I, listen, I'm not trying to do a sermon, so don't let your eyes glaze over on me. <clears throat> but it is a spring. And <clears throat> from that spring, we are called to take care of that spring, the wellspring of life. And so one of the things about boundaries, <clears throat> excuse me, um, <clears throat> one of the things about boundaries is We've got a well out of which life flows, and we need to watch over it and care for it. It's not an offensive weapon. It is a means of caring for it and taking care of it. So there's that. And the second thing, <coughs> goodness, I'm going to have to keep my water near at hand here. The second thing is actually another verse in, in Scripture that um, <clears throat> uh, that the comes out of Galatians. And again, this is one, one that people like to quote, actually. And the one that we quote is, is bear one another's burdens, right? And in so doing, we'll fulfill the law of Christ. That's, but that's where they stop. 
But there are two other verses after that. One talks about evaluating yourself and our work. <clears throat> and then it says one last thing. For every man, should, each one should bear his own load. So bear one another's burdens, but every man should bear his own load. And we look at that and say, well, isn't that just the same thing? It's kind of parallelism. No, actually, the words there are completely different. And in a lot of cases, <clears throat> what I do is I, I point out the fact that the word burden in the Greek actually means boulder. <clears throat> and so oftentimes I refer to this passage as the boulders and backpacks verse. Because every man should carry his own load. Load is knapsack or backpack for us in our modern world. So I have to learn how to be responsible to other people to carry their own responsibilities, encourage, empower, equip. But I also have to recognize that when someone is so crushed by the circumstances of their lives and the things that they have, they have experienced, I need to come alongside of them and bear it with them or for them. For them to regain the strength to deal with what it is that they're they're crushed under. So it requires, this verse in particular, requires some kind of discernment between what's a burden and what's a load, what's a boulder, what's a backpack. Now, obviously, in the real world, boulders are pretty easy to distinguish from backpacks, right? But in the emotional world, it's kind of tough. And so we have to have some measure of discernment that goes along with that. And then the last one, that I want to mention. So three things, all right? Uh, being responsible to versus being responsible for. Um, I Caring and, and, and um, taking care of my heart. I'm responsible for that myself. And the last one is, is keeping the good in and the bad out. That's a simple way of how John and Henry put it in their book. The way that I translate it is <clears throat> we need gates. Uh, you know, the best way to think about boundaries is not about a wall. Most people equate it with that. But think about it in terms of a fence. Actually, specifically a chain link fence, not the kind of fences I have out my back window here. That is a privacy fence, right? And you can't see through it. You hear noise on the other side. If you're tall enough, you can look over it. But that's that's not what we're talking about here. It, the, it's a fence that demarcates, like I said before, it demarcates what I'm responsible for. But all gates, all, all, I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. All fences need gates. And so I am the keeper of the gate around my heart, the, uh, the fence around my heart. So all fences have gates in them, right? There's got to be some access into it. But I am the gatekeeper. I am responsible for what comes in and what doesn't. And, and my challenge is, is discerning what's good and what isn't. What's good for my soul. And sometimes it's, it's, it's people that we know will let, help us grow. They may not help us feel good or comfortable. But they'll help us grow. So, um, so there are three different things here that we have to keep in mind. Now, one one thing that I want to do before I, I, I draw it to a close are, are what John and Henry talk about specific boundary problems. I call it kind of patterns of behavior that are a part of how we relate to people. And the thing I want to say before I ever start this out, and I take another drink, is <clears throat> no one person is ever one of these patterns. No one person is. Sometimes it depends on the relationship I'm in as to which pattern I will get into. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is <clears throat> beware of trying to categorize people or even yourself in any one of these things because it will serve no purpose other than to dismiss the power of what's important to pay attention to here. So, <clears throat> there are four of them, all right? The first one is what I call the yeah, but pattern. And what these people do is they say no 
to good. And th- what they do is they take their problem and they relativize it. Yeah, well, I don't have it so bad because somebody else had it some, somehow worse. So we compare it or we relativize it. And therefore, we don't, we don't listen to people wanting to help us because we've minimized and relativized and dismissed the problem we're experiencing because we've made a comparison. See, comparison is a very powerful means of controlling the impact of something on myself. And <clears throat> so these kinds of people, the yeah, but people, they say no to good that's offered them and they, they, they see asking for help as a weakness. And so they seem unable to ask for help and their boundaries usually are pretty much walls um, in, in their case. So you have the yeah, but people who say no to the good. People say, can I help you? And you say, yeah, no, not really. It's okay. I I don't have it that bad. Somebody else, I just heard somebody else was just in an accident and, and my problem doesn't look so big. Which essentially doesn't answer the person's question, really. And then there are also the go along to get along people. And they say yes to bad. Um, they, they tend to have very fuzzy and indistinct boundaries. And oftentimes they figure out what they want by according to what other people want. And so their tendency is to minimize the differences between them with other people. And usually what drives us along is some fear, a fear of being alone, of being abandoned, <clears throat> of not being liked. I mean, we all, we all at one point or another struggle with this one all the time, really. And so they are the go along to get along folks. And then we have the yeah, but people. And then the third group of people is it's, it's all about outcome people. Essentially they judge whatever it is that is going on in terms of what they desire to see as a result. So if it doesn't produce the result, then whatever they're doing is irrelevant. And I've had this conversation more times than, than I can count anymore of people that are in an organization and I encourage them to speak their concerns and they say, well, why do that? They won't listen to me anyway. See, that's an outcome. And they say, well, it's not worth it. Well, maybe it is just to have a voice and, and accept the dignity of your own voice in the midst of all of that. So... <clears throat> they they relative are not relativized but they they are the ones that oftentimes are uh, the the all about outcome people no is a challenge to overcome um, and they really ultimately are end up resisting taking responsibility because their 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 uh, reference points are so stringent and so narrow that there's nothing that they really have to do with that. And so these outcome people can now be divided up. And I know this is going deeper in, so hang with me. But these uh, all it's all about outcome people can be divided up into two different kinds. Okay. One is the intimidators and the second one is the manipulators. And the intimidators don't listen. They roll over any boundaries people have. They <clears throat> sometimes they escalate or at least threaten to escalate. Um, and, and then people back off and say, no, no, it's okay. Never mind. It's not that big of a deal. And, and really, in a lot of ways, they have no idea that there's anything like boundaries. As a matter of fact, they're often the biggest detractors about boundaries because it gets in their way. Okay, so that's the intimidators. And then the second ones are the manipulators. And these guys are less honest. I mean, honestly, if you look at the intimidators, they're right out and open. Most of us can can pick one of those out miles away. But manipulators are really less honest. You don't know. They just, they're, they're trying to persuade people to believe that they wanted something that they, they actually wanted. So they manipulate circumstances by withholding information or saying just certain parts of it. We say this, see this in in general discourse a lot. And and they 
they manipulate the circumstances and, and they create this illusion that they want what the other person wants and then the other person says, wait, that's not exactly what I wanted. And then they, they, they make the adjustments necessary. So <clears throat> the, the outcome people can be divided up into two groups, the intimidators and the manipulators, okay? And then the last one is the, what I call the what's your problem people. They, they don't hear the needs of other people. Now, again, they're a little bit like the other folks of relativizing things. But they take a very practical, pragmatic, functional approach to things. And they're the people that say, if you don't like how you feel, then change your feelings. Life is tough. Suck it up, buttercup. Get over it. And they tend to have a very critical spirit. They, they are critiquing. And this fits into some of what I talked about last week when I was talking about the difference between, you know, connecting versus being critical. Um, or <clears throat> is is they have a critical spirit. They're looking for evidence that they don't need to listen to the needs of other people. They, they need to. They will give their best alternative to living life to people, and they better darn well um, abide by it. So they they are absorbed. Ultimately, they are absorbed in their own desires and needs, and that's really what it boils down to is their own stuff and their own stuff is now imposed on other people. So boundaries, these patterns of boundaries that you see in people and in yourself, I, we all have them, is that we can either do the go along to get along because we just don't want conflict. We don't want you know somebody to be mad or disappointed or whatever. And the interesting thing about that is the underlying is I'm trying to control what the other person does, right? Really. And so there's a little bit of manipulation in there, in in it. So <clears throat> the the go along to get along people, the the uh, you know, what's your problem kind of people, the uh, all about outcome people, you know, the intimidators and manipulators. Um, and <clears throat> what was the other one I mentioned? Um all about outcome uh, and the yeah, but people. Yeah, but my problem is that, isn't that bad. So you have these four different patterns that probably any one of us do, does at one point or another, all of them really. Um, and, and when we start thinking in terms of winning and losing, now we're in the intimidator camp, if you will. So all of these patterns we have identified, we've seen, I've seen them in, in a lot of relationships that I've been a part of, that I've tried to help. Um, and and the question then becomes, all right, all right, all right, all right enough already. <laughs> I've, I've had enough of having my dirty laundry aired today, so what do I do about it? And I, I'm, uh, my answer would be, I'm glad you asked. <clears throat> because what I had said at the beginning of the podcast is a, there's an exciting new development on the, on the website that I have resurrected uh, the old setting new boundaries devotional. Um, and it comes to us, to you now, if you're interested, it comes to you now in the form of an email that is a devotional email, a devotional thought that helps you think about um, what boundary issues do I have that I need to pay attention to? How can I go about repairing them? And then how can I maintain them? And once I've got them set. And so every third one <clears throat> is along those um, uh, kind of answering those questions. And so the, the, the way to get this is you can get this. And, and if you're really ambitious, you can get a whole year of them. Um, but if you don't, that's okay. If you want to just try the first month. And the first week is free, so you can just see if you like them or not. And then if you want to bail, you can. Um, but it's on the website at drmitch.com. Go all the way to the bottom. You'll see a sign-up page there. <clears throat> it supports the mission and efforts and vision of SGI. Uh, and so it's $5 a month. Uh, and it's uh, you, you create a subscription there, and you'll get, you'll get billed every 
every month. We've got lots of these, right? We get so many of these, we forget which ones we have subscriptions to and which ones we don't. And, and so you can do that. Or if you want to commit to a year and say, yeah, I'm in. I want to, I want to do this whole thing and take it all the way out to this year to keep me on track, to keep me focused. These are perfect for that. And they're short. It takes all of three minutes to read them. Um, but they always start with, with a scripture passage that anchors us. And then a short prayer at the end just to, to focus us, really, and ask God to, to, to be a part of this journey that we're on because that's what he's about. Ben said it just right. Jesus matches our pace and so the same thing is true with this journey and this devotional is a way to go about doing that so you can sign up for five bucks a month and bail out at any point in time if it's not helping or you you know you get bored with it or whatever it might be or if you want to just commit to a year it's 50 bucks it normally would be 60 uh, it's 50 bucks and all those funds go directly into supporting the, the mission and vision of, of uh, SGI. So there's a concrete thing you can do. Other than that, you might want to mull over some of the things, certainly, that I've talked about, what patterns are typical of you and how do they impact your relationships. Um, we will go to a new topic next week that is related to this that I think is equally as important. Um, but I'm not going to tip my hand just yet. So thanks for joining me so much. Just a couple things. If you have questions about any of this or you need more clarification, DM me on Instagram or um, you can do it on Facebook as well, uh, Ray.Mitch. Uh, you can do it there. Um, or you can, you can there's a, there's a Q&A uh, place on the website that you can leave a question uh, there as well. So you can do that. Um, and we've added, th th there's a feature on the website that if you sign up, that you'll be notified of any new information coming out of the website. And I'm, I'm this week, I'm going to be posting a new blog, uh, from an anonymous, uh, writer that I think you'll enjoy. So be sure to check that out. There's the, the, the blog, the out of ashes blog on the website. Of course, you can follow us on social media. There are three social media outlets that we work from. One's Instagram. It's at the Psych Monologues. Facebook, I already mentioned, Ray.Mitch. And then LinkedIn, Dr. Mitch. And remember, my last name has an S in it, M-I-T-S-C-H. So the podcast, if you don't want the video, got it, understand it. Uh, if you'd rather just do the straight podcast, you can find us on any platform that you consume podcasts and listen to podcasts, whether it's Spotify or iTunes or Amazon Music or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and if you participate in the subscription, you're going to be participating and partnering with us, which we are immensely grateful for. I am immensely grateful for to continue to grow the scholarship fund for the, the uh, silent retreats that are part of the bigger vision of SGI uh, that help people in their spiritual formation uh, we have two coming up in the spring. One is for active students at CCU, and one is for our alumni. Um, and all of your contributions are tax deductible, so you get a write-off on your taxes at the end of the year um, that uh, you'll get a statement, and it'll let you know what your your uh, donations have been, and you can uh, be able to use that in your tax return, perhaps. I don't know how often that that actually works for us. It sure doesn't. But we are tax deductible organization now, uh, nonprofit. Uh, and I've I spent some time at the beginning of the podcast to tell you what the vision and mission of what it is we're going about doing. If you would rather send a physical check, you are more than welcome to do so. Uh, you can send it, uh, make your check out to Stained Glass International or SGI. That's fine too. Uh, the address is Stained Glass International, P.O. Box 160, East Lake, Colorado 80614. So P.O. Box 160, East Lake, Colorado 80614. And that, that would be made out to, or the address would be to SGI. So 
I think that's it for today. Hopefully, you, we, we've had a little less of a blockage between me and my video listeners. Uh, and uh, we can, I thank you immensely for taking some time out of your day to sit down and listen. I pray that there's encouragement and maybe some provoking of looking at some of the relationships and how you can benefit from doing things a little bit differently and looking at it you you, you know all change starts with identification right so you gotta identify what the problem is and that's that's what a, a podcast like this is for just to help you in your efforts to have healthier relationships in 2023 so thanks again for joining me as always love you later bye